Hey everybody, this is Chris with Simple Tech coming at you with this week's Simple Tech Tip, helping you take the stress out of IT. So this week I want to talk a little bit about virtual machines. If you're not quite sure what that is, imagine you're running a Mac system and you want to run Windows, maybe Linux, maybe another Mac operating system. A virtual machine essentially gives you that capability. Now, typically most users will just run Windows on a Mac and that's kind of like the extent of it. Uh, there is one company in particular that I really, really like. Um, there are probably two really in that field that matter. One is VMware uh, and the other one is Parallels. Uh, I prefer Parallels. It just seems to be an easier process. Uh, for a lot of business clients, I've installed both and Parallels definitely seems to be the one that I lean to uh, when it comes to installation. So we're going to go over that in the video. Um, here in a little bit. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about virtualization. So if you're a Mac user, virtualization is your best bet for running Windows on the same machine. Uh, instead of having to dual boot into two operating systems, uh, virtual machines let you like run Windows on top of your Mac. So you'll be running your Mac system and you'll be able to quickly and easily launch Windows. Whereas before, you'd have to use a program called Boot Camp and you'd have to restart your computer, hold down the option key, choose the Windows partition, log in. You couldn't work simultaneously and flawlessly between the two. Uh, and I think this is one of the reasons why Apple got rid of Boot Camp was because of the advancements in the virtual machines with Parallels and VMware. Now, virtual machines are virtualized versions of physical machines. Uh, so they come complete with operating systems, the necessary software you might need. Uh, so this means that you can run Windows on a Mac because a virtual machine will use the same processor, the same RAM as the host system. So is your iMac, your MacBook Pro, whatever it may, may be. Now, that being said, if you plan to run both operating systems regularly, be sure to have a Mac that can handle the extra workload. So I always recommend, like if you think that your minimum system for running just a Mac operating system is eight gigabytes of RAM and you know the base model M2 processor chip now, I guess, because you know we're past Intel these days, um, bump it up a little bit. You know, yeah, you're gonna pay a little extra, a couple hundred bucks here and a couple hundred bucks there, depending on what specs that you choose. But trust me, it is well, well worth it in the long run, especially if the Mac lasts you five, six years, like a lot of them do. Now, the benefit of running Windows on a virtual machine is that it's completely isolated from the host operating system. Um, now, there's an asterisk there because you can integrate your files and things along those lines, like your documents and stuff. So if you wanted to, you know, access your Mac desktop items on the Windows desktop, you can. Um, but this really means that you can install Windows programs, you can access Windows files, make any changes to the Windows side without worrying about Mac OS. Or you can have a continuity setting where they kind of both integrate with one another, which is really nice. Uh, plus, you can easily switch between Windows and Mac. You know, it's just as easy as switching between your email, mail program, Outlook, Mail, whatever it may be, and your web browser, Safari, Chrome, Firefox. You know, it's just a matter of just clicking. Right? and you can jump back and forth. So whether you're a Windows user looking to switch over to Mac or a Mac user who needs Windows functionality, virtual machines are the perfect solution for you. Virtualization, you can run Windows on a Mac without worrying about performance, data corruption. So go ahead and give it a try. You won't be disappointed, especially if you need that Windows stuff. And I'm looking at you, all those people that use QuickBook Desktop on Windows, because I know accountants love that stuff. Um, so Parallels is what I use as a virtual machine and what I prefer to run Windows on my Mac. Um, and I'm going to kind of go through that process with you here today. Not only is it easy to set up, but it also offers great functionality. Um, plus I can even drag and drop Windows between programs, Mac OS, making it easier to use both at the same time. So if you're really looking for a reliable virtualization solution for running Windows on a Mac, think about parallels, I just highly recommend. So now let's dive in on how to install it. All right, let's get going. Okay, so I'm going to start off kind of like if you, you didn't know anything, right? So um, I'm going to just jump first into Safari. And I'm just going to do a search for parallels, right? If I could type today or, you know, something along those lines. 
So you can see right here, there's an ad right at the top. Yeah, let's cost them a little bit of money, but let's go ahead and jump into Parallels. So you can see they just released Parallels Desktop 18 for Mac. It's $99.99 per year, or you could upgrade if you're an existing user. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna do the free trial because I do already have an account um, using a different email address, but I'm gonna go ahead and do a free trial here so you can kind of see kind of what the steps are. And hey, this gives you an opportunity to test it out before you dive in and really get going. So we're gonna go ahead and download free trial. And I'm gonna go ahead and do allow. And it is pretty quick. So download Parallels Desktop, what you'll notice, oops, I just accidentally clicked on my trash can instead of my downloads folder, install Parallels Desktop already came down. So we got it here, this is what it looks like. Now this is actually clickable, this icon, so I'll just go ahead and give that a double click. Yep, we are going to go ahead and open that. Um, I'm gonna uncheck participate in the customer experience. I'm not a big fan of I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm actually, let me rephrase, I'm a big fan of privacy and I just don't like people taking log files from my computer, anything like that. So I just prefer not to do it. So the first step in this process is it's just gonna install Parallels. And then once we launch and run Parallels, it's gonna basically go, hey, you wanna install Windows. And it's gonna install a version of Windows for you that is usable. Um, it won't be activated with Microsoft because you still need an activation code with Microsoft. Um, for my purposes though, it works. Um, so I never really go beyond that. And really I only use Windows more for testing things out. Um, if you're gonna be a daily Windows user on your Mac, I would go ahead and recommend that you purchase a, a version of Windows 10, Windows 11, whichever you prefer. Um, I'd have to say if you're a Mac user, Windows 11 is getting closer and closer to Mac OS, um, you know taking some little bites out of uh, the Apple there, Windows is, so um, definitely take a look at it, you know, because I, I find it very intuitive because I'm a Mac user. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and install, requires my password. And a lot of this stuff is just kind of sit and wait, you know, like the Windows side installing Windows is a sit and wait. If you've ever installed Windows before, God, I remember it would take hours, right? You'd have a disc that you would put in in your CD, DVD drive, and it would take hours. Um, now it really takes minutes uh, and we're not going to make you sit through all of it. We'll fast forward through the install process, but just at least so you get an idea how this goes. So you can see for all of Parallels to work, you know, with the increased security in Mac OS that Apple's put in place, we are going to have to uh, allow some permissions. Most of this is to like your desktop folder, your documents folder, your downloads folder, things along those lines. So we'll go ahead and do next. As I say, do you want to allow your desktop? Okay. Next one's gonna be documents, okay. Downloads, access was already allowed, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit finish. And the reason why this is there is because if you want, there's a feature in Parallels that will allow your desktop items on your Mac to actually show on the Windows desktop as well. So you could open those files on either operating system. Um, it's pretty snazzy, uh, I like it. But now you can see right here, you go ahead and download and install Windows 11. So it's Windows 11 home version, nothing, nothing special. You can skip this process if you want to, but if you don't have a copy of it, I would just say just go ahead and click install and go ahead and install Windows. Now you'll notice in the top right hand corner of my screen, um, Apple's notification center popped up and just said, hey, Parallels would like to give you notifications, alerts, sounds. There's no reason that I can think of that I want Parallels doing that. So I'm just gonna say don't allow. And now you can see it's just downloading and getting ready to install. All right, so that was the download part, right? So three minutes, not too bad, you know? So depending on your network speed, of course, that's gonna vary, um, but a pretty quick download. And so pretty efficient. I'm just kind of waiting for it to validate. I got this computer working hard. I can hear the fan humming along. So a couple of things that you'll notice already too if you're running your Mac. If you look down by your trash can, you're gonna have the parallels icon, and then you're also gonna have the Windows 11 icon. So it's already starting that installation process. 
You're also going to see a new icon up in your menu bar area up at the top. So you can see it looks kind of like a monitor or a computer screen with two vertical lines, uh, parallels logo basically. And so you can see if I click on that, these are going to be some parallels options in here. So like if you wanted to configure and customize it or some additional preferences for parallels or create an account and purchase a license. Um, these are going to be all those places that you're going to find that information. Um, so just kind of something to be aware of. So we're going to wait for this to finish validating. And then we will move on. It'll actually go through the installation process next. All right, so you can see it wants permission to access the downloads folder. And that's mainly because that's where Parallels was downloaded to. All right, there we go. Windows 11 starting up. Parallels would like access to my camera, sure why not, to my microphone, sure why not. And that's because they're both in use right now where Parallels is opening up, so you may not get those um, prompting you. All right, so now setup is starting. So this is the main installation process that we run into with um, Windows. So it's going to go through, so you'll probably see a blue screen here in a minute and it's going to say kind of where we're at and we got to just kind of just basically sit and wait and let them kind of run through. There was a time back in the day where the screen would give me anxiety. But now, Windows has actually gotten a lot better. It's just funny though that this screen is still 20 years old. Okay, maybe not that old, but it's been around a while. So you can see that whole installation process that we just kind of watched between download and install took, well, I wasn't paying that close of attention in terms of the time and I should have, uh, probably about nine minutes thus far. And you know, it's not completely done yet, but you can see how fast and smooth and easy the process is. I mean, I probably only clicked my mouse like five times, right? And most of the time it was to give it permissions to the documents folder, the desktop folder, the downloads folder, and just to hit, yeah, install. Uh, and Parallels kind of takes over and does its thing. Now granted, let's just say 10 minutes. Let's say it's been 10 minutes thus far. I'm running a 2018 Mac Mini is what this is running off of. Um, and that's the speed that we're getting the install, uh, installation process and all that good stuff. So obviously if you have a newer system with a faster processor, more RAM, you know, the upgraded SSDs, uh, you're gonna have a much faster experience than I'm even having right now. Um, but yet, still, I think about 10 minutes in installing the Windows operating system, you know, from what I'm used to in the past, um, this is amazing. Uh, it's extremely quick, it's easy to do. Um, there's not much you have to worry about. So we're gonna get ready, it's gonna have me, you know, create an account and sign in, and then you're gonna go through that set, those setup uh, steps, kind of once this is all done. And so we'll just kind of get to that point and then we're gonna wrap it up. All right, so this is gonna be the setup screen for Windows 11. It's gonna first check for updates, make sure there's any updates that it needs to do. And if you're new to Windows 11, what Microsoft is doing is they're, again, I made the, the offhand comment earlier of Windows 11 is getting closer and closer to Mac OS. Well, what you'll notice during the setup process is now they want you to sign in using your Outlook, Live.com, whatever Microsoft ID that you're using, um, and it integrates with OneDrive and all that kind of good stuff, very much how Apple uses iCloud on the Mac side and setting up your Macs for you and all that kind of good stuff. Um, 
So you'll kind of see that through the, the setup process. Um, and we're gonna go through that in the next video, but ultimately I'm about 15 minutes in and you can see it's just running some last necessary updates, maybe the installation file that Parallels has and uses doesn't have all the recent updates to it and all that good stuff. Um, and there's gonna be some drivers that Parallels is gonna probably install for on the Windows side so that way it's compatible with the Mac and you know it uses the hardware of the Mac appropriately. Um, so, you know, there's a few more little things here that are just going to be automated and kind of walk you through that process. But I'm not going to continue to bore you, but you could see, you know, let's say the updates do take another five minutes. About 20 minutes later, you're going to be running Windows. Um, and take a, stay tuned for our next video because what I'll do is I'll go through the actual setup process of Windows 11 from start to finish, you know, by creating your ID, logging in, all that kind of good stuff in the Windows 11 experience. Um, so until next time, folks, I'm not going to make you sit here and watch this. Please keep your PC on and plugged in just because it's very boring. But next time we'll go through the login process and get you up and running. But anticipate, you know, depending on your network speed and the system that you're using, about 20 minutes in total to get the whole thing installed. And if you're starting with the free trial version like we did here today, you'll see that it's really easy. You download the free trial, goes into your downloads folder, you double click, you open it. Um, you honestly just run this here and it kind of walks you through the process you know we spent a lot of time in this video just sitting and watching but that's the reason why i choose parallels because vmware is a little bit different they're going to ask you for the installation disk of windows 11 or whatever version of windows you want and there's just a little more to it. it's a little more cumbersome but this is nice easy gets you to where you want to be allows you to run windows on your mac flawlessly and we'll explore setting that up and some of the cool features with Parallels in our next video. Until then, everybody have a great one, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.